Trump. The reporter who interviewed that mystery voice What's your name again? John Miller. now speaking out. She says it was a younger Donald Trump posing as his own spokesman. Of course he's lying. What makes her so sure? Breaking news, the deadly bus accident near the Texas border, at least eight killed, dozens hurt. The bus rolling onto its side, emergency crews on the scene. New details coming in right now. Travel nightmares, long lines at major airports around the country. Passengers reaching a breaking point. I hate it. I mean, I hope I get on my flight. How early do you have to arrive so you don't miss your flight? The mother on vacation falling overboard during a cruise, the desperate search, and why it took so long to call in the Coast Guard. Prom night disaster, the limo in flames, 10 teenagers escaping the fire on the big night. This is ABC World News Tonight. Good evening and thank you for joining us on this Saturday. I'm Cecilia Vega. We begin with the race for the White House and the voice from the past coming back to haunt Donald Trump. The GOP's presumptive nominee accused of posing as his own spokesman during a phone interview some 20 years ago. Well, tonight we are hearing from the woman on the other end of that call. At the same time, Hillary Clinton is on the attack, suggesting Donald Trump is hiding something by refusing to release his taxes. Tonight, Trump fighting battles on multiple fronts, as he has for so much of this campaign. And ABC's Mary Bruce starts us off. Tonight, the person on the other end of this call What's your name again? John Miller. tells us there's no question in her mind. I knew right away. I knew as soon as I got off the phone, it was Donald. In 1991, Sue Carswell, then a reporter for People magazine, conducted this interview with a person who identified himself as Donald Trump's spokesman, John Miller. He's somebody that has a lot of options, and frankly, uh, you know, he gets called by everybody. He gets called by everybody in the book. Women. Miller bragged about Trump's many girlfriends, saying even Madonna wanted to date him. But she called and wanted to go out with him, that I can tell you. Take a listen to the uncanny similarities. That I can tell you. That I can tell you. That I can tell you, okay? No doubt, the real Donald Trump. Oh, no doubt. He apologized two weeks later and said, I'm sorry, in print. Carswell says Trump called and admitted it was him all along. He said that he, he was sorry that he made the call, that it was a... a a joke that got that went awry. But now Trump adamantly denies it was him. It shows he's a liar. You think it shows he's a liar? Yes, it shows he's a liar right now. And that distresses me. This as Hillary Clinton is out with a new video tonight hammering Trump for refusing to release his tax returns. <laughs> If I decide to run for office, I'll produce my tax returns, absolutely. I can't do it until the audit is finished. Until that audit is complete, Trump says he won't reveal how much he pays in taxes. What is your tax rate? Uh, it's none of your business. You'll see it when I release. And Cecilia, Donald Trump is about to receive a big financial boost from billionaire casino magnate Sheldon Adelson, who we've learned is about to contribute a substantial amount to Trump's campaign. Cecilia. Mary Bruce leading us off once again. Thank you. And we have breaking news in Texas to tell you about reports of a deadly bus accident near the border. Emergency crews on the scene outside Laredo. At least eight people dead, 44 hurt, more than 50 people on board that bus. The accident happening on Highway 83. The charter bus left San Juan, Texas. It was on its way to a casino when it rolled over. No word yet on what caused that crash. Next, the growing anger at America's airports, not just passengers, airlines too. Outraged over long lines at security, the situation so bad, travelers warned to arrive three hours before their flights. Tonight, the TSA is under massive pressure to fix the problem and fast. Here's ABC's Eva Pilgrim. Tonight, frustrated passengers at the breaking point. There's got to be a better way. In Denver this morning, endless lines. This afternoon in Baltimore, travelers snaked all the way through the terminal. It's frustrating. And today at Chicago Midway Airport, passengers stretched clear out to the parking garage. I hate it. I mean, I hope I get on my flight. TSA should know better. We asked one passenger to track her way to Dallas Love Field. Hopefully we all make our flights. Departing, departing. Nearly an hour later, she's on board in the nick of time. 
I got on nine minutes before the plane took off. The TSA promising change. The plan, hire 700 new officers by June 15th, use canine teams to speed up screenings, and ask airlines to reduce carry-on bags. ABC's David Curley talking with the man tackling the problem, Homeland Security Secretary Jay Johnson. Mr. Secretary, will passengers wait three hours this summer in line? Obviously, waiting three hours for what may be a two-hour flight or a 90-minute flight is, is not acceptable. For now, the only ways to get ahead in line will cost you. You can try TSA PreCheck for up to $100 every five years or see if your airline has an expedited security add-on to your ticket for an additional fee. There are some free ways to plan ahead. You can check the wait times on the TSA app or tweet Ask TSA to find out how long the line will be. Cecilia? Planning ahead will be key this summer. Eva, thank you. Now to the desperate search for a mother missing at sea. Security video shows her falling overboard from a Carnival cruise ship in the Gulf of Mexico. The ship 200 miles off the Texas coast. The Coast Guard contacted hours after she disappeared. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez on the race to find her. Tonight, the Coast Guard scouring part of the Gulf of Mexico for this mother of four who went overboard from a cruise ship. The Carnival Liberty was heading from Galveston to Cozumel at around 2 Friday morning when the Coast Guard says Samantha Broberg somehow fell into the water from the 10th story of the ship. Officials explain her friends didn't realize she was missing until later that day and notified Carnival staff. The announcement started coming every five minutes. And we knew that there is somebody missing. The cruise line says following procedure, they searched the ship and surveillance video, discovering Broberg's fall was caught on camera. Soon after, at 5 Friday evening, the Coast Guard says they were notified, a full 15 hours after Broberg went overboard. Because so much time had passed, it definitely uh, makes it more difficult to find somebody and, and save them. Cases like this are extremely rare. Carnival says as a safeguard, they are now testing alarm systems like this. <laughs> that sound when someone goes overboard. Though the cruise line says those systems have historically not been reliable. And the Coast Guard tells us they will keep searching for Broberg as long as she could still be alive. Her family saying tonight they are hopeful. Cecilia. Okay, Marcy, thank you. We turn now to the frightening ride to prom for a group of teens in Massachusetts. All 10 of them escaped when their stretch limo caught fire on their way to the big dance. The entire car went up in flames. Here's ABC's Gloria Riviera with the growing concern about limo safety. Oh my God. Prom night, meant to be perfect, but this one a near disaster. I just got completely engulfed. Just minutes before, 10 students from Natick High School in Massachusetts had been inside that limo when they smelled smoke. Smoke was everywhere, so we got out and backed away, and like two minutes later, flames started flying up. Charlie Cotter telling ABC News, at first the driver said not to worry, but the kids, all 10, scrambling out of the two rear doors just in time, the driver getting out too. It was scary. I was, I was in tears. Limousines carry up to 14 people and routinely only have two exits. In 2013, five members of a bachelorette party died when their limo burst into flames on San Francisco's Bay Bridge. The four women who survived escaping through the only way out, the small opening to the driver's seat. Still no word on what caused Friday night's fire, but the students say they were lucky that the driver pulled over when he did. Bad things could have happened. The group made it to prom on another bus and had their magic night. One parent told us the high schoolers got a good deal on the limo. He's now encouraging all students and parents to just check out the company handling transportation on prom night. Cecilia. OK, Gloria, thank you. Next, a major American company taking a stand against the death penalty. Pharmaceutical giant Pfizer has blocked the use of its drugs for executions. More than 20 U.S. and European drug companies have already adopted similar restrictions. Pfizer's decision, decision now means FDA approved drugs are no longer allowed to be used in lethal injections. Overseas tonight to an ABC News exclusive on the ground with American troops fighting ISIS in Iraq. Six people killed today there in a suicide bomb attack outside Baghdad. This week alone, more than 100 dead in a string of bombings. Our team traveling into the heart of the battle zone. ABC's Martha Raddatz takes us inside this fight. 
We arrive at the Al Assad Air Base 150 miles west of Baghdad Fire! to meet the U.S. Marines in the fight against ISIS. It's just been very, very different uh, how we're doing it through and by the Iraqi military. And leading the charge on the ground, these elite Iraqi counterterrorism forces. Their goal recapture Mosul, Iraq's second largest city and ISIS de facto capital in Iraq. They train for an assault, repel down buildings, and set off an explosion. This may be an exercise to train all these new recruits, but these counterterrorism forces have been in the fight for years. On Friday, we got a firsthand view of what that fight means, driving to Ramadi, recaptured from ISIS just months ago, in the rubble thousands of unexploded bombs. So Martha, when you and your crew are out walking around, please do not leave any hard surface or pavement. Despite the dangers, a small number of the families that once lived here are now returning. Children make peace signs from their balcony. ISIS held this town for about eight months, and finally the Iraqis were able to retake it. But taking Mosul back will be a much bigger challenge. Back at the base, the U.S. Land Forces Commander Gary Valesky explains how dire the situation in Mosul is. People that try to leave Mosul are being executed. My assessment in Mosul, it's getting worse and worse every day. Martha Raditz, ABC News, Baghdad. And our thanks to Martha and her team for that report. Back here at home, President Obama enlisting a Grammy-winning rapper to help tackle America's drug crisis. The president, in his Saturday address to the nation, appearing with Macklemore, the musician, describing his own battle with painkillers, hoping to raise awareness about prescription and opioid abuse. If I hadn't gotten the help that I needed when I needed it, I definitely would not be here today. And I want to help others facing the same challenges that I did. We all need President Obama also that. calling on Congress, Congress to approve to more than $1 billion dollars in funding for and treatment and research. But we do want to move on to the storm threat on the move tonight. This time-lapse video showing a supercell and right there some fierce lightning strikes in Hollis, Oklahoma. Meteorologist Indra Peterson joins us now. It's great to have you back with us, but you brought some bad weather with you. You're watching a huge part of the country and some cold, too. Yeah, we're definitely watching a very strong cold front pushing its way in through the northeast tonight, still bringing that unstable air with it. Still actually looking for the potential for some isolated, strong thunderstorms out there. You'll notice winds gusting even as high as 40 miles per hour from New York down through Richmond. All this a sign of that cool air ushering in right behind it. In fact, you'll notice the temperatures dipping down to even the 30s into the upper Midwest tomorrow. We're talking temperatures 20 degrees below normal for this time of year and it doesn't stay there that air is going to be ushering into the east so we could potentially see some record lows for the northeast by monday morning even a few snow showers cecilia that is not what we want to hear indra thank you you probably have one electronic car keys well now thieves have figured out a way to use this wireless technology to break into cars abc's lauren lister talks to a hacker who tells us just how easy it is to fall victim Tonight, would-be crooks caught on camera breaking into cars without breaking a thing. In California, this alleged thief using some sort of device to unlock the car, walking away with a laptop and an expensive custom bike. A similar incident caught on camera outside this home in Seattle. So how are they getting in? This is the criminal's universal key fob. This security researcher working with car manufacturers says thieves are hacking your key fob, and he's figured out how. A criminal would essentially take this device and they'd plant it underneath the car. As soon as the user of the car unlocks their vehicle, this now has a code that's stored that can be used later on. When the criminal returns to the vehicle, they can take this device from underneath the car, press the button, and unlock the vehicle. He says it only cost him 30 bucks to make, and so far it's worked on every make and model he's tried. The insurance industry trying to tackle the growing problem as well. It's all over the country. There's no one is exempt from it. No one's immune from it. And if you've got a car and they can beat it with, beat it with some kind of technology, they're going to do it. Right now, these alleged thieves can only break in. But Camcar says it's just a matter of time before hackers can start your car and drive off. One tip to protect yourself. Camcar says when you lock your car door, hit the lock button on your key fob several times. That should stop a hacker's device from working. Cecilia? Good advice, Lauren. Thank you. Still ahead, New York City takes the fight against Zika to the air. And the street racing crash caught on camera, plus the witness who raced in to pull the driver to safety. I feel the need, the need for speed. Ow! 
Oh yeah, the anniversary of a classic. You will need your aviator glasses when we come back. This is ABC World News Tonight, brought to you by Zenny Optical.